We have breaking news from the Washington Post, which is reporting tonight that alleged Russian agent Maria Butina was in much closer contact with President Trump's orbit than previously known. Butina is the Russian gun rights activist who is in jail awaiting trial after she was charged with illegally trying to influence U.S. politics for the Kremlin. Tonight, the Washington Post reports that Butina sought out interactions with J.D. Gordon, who served for six months as the, Trump, as the Trump campaign's director of national security before leaving in August 2016 and being offered a role in the nascent Trump transition effort. The two exchanged several emails in September and October 2016, culminating in an invitation from Gordon to attend a concert by the rock band Styx in Washington. I can't make that up. Gordon also invited Butina to attend his birthday party in late October of that year. Joining us now is Rosalind Helderman, political investigative reporter who broke this story, the political investigative reporter who broke this story for The Washington Post. Also back with us is Harry Littman. Rosalind, I'm sorry I'm laughing, but inviting her to a Styx concert in his birthday party is pretty funny. Um, yeah, I who give knew us, they still toured? Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Um, but then again, I'm a fan of a band that's been touring for 20-something years or more, um, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't pass judgment. Uh, here's what J.D. Gordon told you tonight. Let me read it. From everything I've seen or read, everything I've read since her arrest last month, it seems the Maria Butina saga is basically a sensationalized clickbait story meant to smear a steady stream of Republicans and NRA members she reportedly encountered over the past few years. Since she networked so extensively among both groups at conferences and social events, I wonder which prominent Republican political figures she has not come across. Uh, I got to tell you, from the photos I've seen of Butina, she has been standing next to some prominent political figures, and including former presidential candidates um, long before Donald Trump got the nomination, and, and prominent NRA members. What makes the interaction with J.D. Gordon so significant? I think um, part of it is his connection to the Trump campaign, uh, and it's clear from emails that were described to us uh, that that was uh, a key part of why she sort of sought out this interaction. Um, she apparently met J.D. Gordon at an event at the Swiss embassy. Uh, she was with Paul Erickson, the Republican operative she was apparently dating. And uh, Paul then sent an email both to J.D. and to uh, Ms. Butina after the event, sort of reconnecting them and describing them to one another. And what Paul, the, the way he described J.D. was to say, uh, this is a person who is very important in the Trump transition. He's the kind of person that all, that all the right people listen to his advice on international policy. So it did seem that the, the Trump connection was part of uh, why she was making contact with him. Let me ask you more about the, the Trump campaign foreign policy advisors, they were not visible on, on the campaign, not really. Uh, people like George Papadopoulos, not around much. I never saw him actually on the campaign. Carter Page didn't see him either. J.D. Gordon was somebody who was named, didn't see him on the campaign. Uh, th these names seem to come out of, not come out of nowhere. The, the, the Trump campaign was pressured to release a list of who was advising him, because at the time, nobody it seemed, was advising him. And at the time, considering that nobody was answering the phone and nobody made appearances, it kind of felt like these people were just random people they, they put on a list and sent to reporters. It now looks like there's, there's something more there. I mean, given that, that Carter um, was somebody that the intelligence community had, it, had their eye on uh, because of the interactions he was having with Russians, George Papadopoulos, the one who, it's, a, it's reported, started this whole investigation because he was bragging uh, to an Australian diplomat in a London bar that Russia had dirt on Hillary Clinton. And now J.D. Gordon linking these two seemingly separate investigations on, on a, a Russian influence campaign. Yeah, I've done quite a bit of reporting on Carter Page and uh, George Papadopoulos in particular, and uh, one of the things that struck me about the two of them was that they really aggressively sought out uh, the connection with the Trump campaign at a time when, as you mentioned, uh, the campaign was really having a devil of a time finding uh, sort of uh, uh, figures who could, they could tout as foreign policy advisors. Uh, we did a story once uh, quoting a, a Trump advisor at the time saying basically anybody with a pulse uh, was what they were looking for. Yeah. And people like George and Carter were people with a pulse who stepped forward and said, choose us. Yeah, I got to tell you, the, the day that I saw George Papadopoulos's picture Sure, I was taken aback. I did not expect somebody so young. Uh, Harry Littman, um, uh, what stands out to you about this? 
Do they, well, speaking of so young, she's 29, he's 50. So we have again the sort of vanity of older men for uh, historians of political scandals. This is the exact ages, it occurred to me, of Gary Hart and Donna Rice in huh. monkey business time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the whole kind of, of younger woman, uh, you know, using. Uh, uh, older uh, guys to get to get political influence, but what stands out to me is you said it. You know what? What's the defense of J. D. Gordon? I don't know if there's a prominent po Republican political official she hasn't met with. It augurs a very effective several months where she's penetrating anywhere and everywhere she can with the help of this Republican operative uh, and and as you say. Um, lover, Keith Erickson, and it just seems like this is not a sort of one week well, little s story and episode, but she, she really uh, got around. And, and Harry, just really quickly, uh, could this new, what uh, Rosalind uncovered, say the special counsel didn't know about it, I don't know. Uh, they know about most things, but say they didn't know about it. Is this the sort yeah. of thing that, that could prompt them to call her in for questioning? Oh, well, she's arrested, so yeah, and she's going to she's going to have enormous. To Enormous pressure on her, but yes, they'll talk to her. But also, there are some figures in the campaign, uh, in her wide circle, and and they will zero in like Gordon. But there, we already knew of a couple others. So that's what will really interest them: the couple people from the campaign, the masquerade party, uh, just after the election, et cetera. Got it. Harry Lippman, Rosalind Helderman, guys, thank you very much. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.